Hello, and thank you for joining today's webinar. Before we get started, get some housekeeping out of the way. All lines are muted throughout the presentation. We ask that you use the question box there on your GoToWebinar to ask any questions you might have, and they will be answered after the presentation. Today's presenter is Pat Armour. Pat recently joined Guide Technologies as our CSI Business Development Manager. Pat has 20 years of experience with CSI in a variety of roles, such as a user, business partner, and a consultant. Pat is on the Infor North American Channel Board and is chairman of the US, the CSI committee. Without further ado, we'll pass it off to Pat and he can kick it off. Pat? One moment. Hello? There you are. There we are. Sorry about that. Technology as usual. All right. Well, welcome, everyone. Uh, I want to get started here with a little uh, PowerPoint just to go over the agenda, what we're going to talk about today. Um, some of you may or may not be familiar with uh, mobile. Um, Get started with the slideshow. Okay, so uh, today we are going to go through some of the mobile apps. Um, one of the key points to uh, the mobile app is that we do need to have uh, iOS. So if any of you are not familiar with uh, the Infor operating service, uh, that's what houses um, the Mingle application, uh, the chat. Uh, IDM, Coleman, <clears throat> all of the things that, that go around CSI um, and, and all the other ERP uh, software packages. So we do need to talk a little bit about that because a lot of the content that I might be might be talking about when I talk about Mingle or Coleman, uh, you just really aren't even familiar with what those are. Uh, so we'll talk about uh, IDM, which is in for document management, uh, Mingle, which is our collaboration social uh, mobile app. That allows us to communicate throughout the company, kind of like um, kind of like uh, Microsoft Teams, or if you're familiar with any of those. InforGo, uh, that's kind of a new one, but it's it's supposed to be an all-in-one inclusive place to kind of pull in all of these things, chat and mingle. Um, it's rather it's it's fairly new rollout for Infor. Um, chat and <laughs> Burst. So those are the I am going to show Burst Mobile, although I don't have it connected to CSI, but I do have uh, uh, dashboards uh, that we built. So you can kind of get a, a little teaser of that uh, when that application uh, will be completely rolled out. Uh, I don't know if Infor is really sure, but at least we can get a, get a look at some of the dashboards. Then uh, just real quick, talking about how easy it is to get connected to the mobile as long as you, know, you have iOS installed and everything. And then open it up for questions. So that's all we have for the PowerPoint. So I'm actually going to get started uh, by <clears throat> looking inside of uh, the actual application for CSI. So inside of iOS, uh, we get something called home pages, and that's where we can build these. Um, views and lookups for each individual user. You can have your own home page and it allows you to do things like quick entry to create your own navigation menu to look up uh, quick, uh, quick links. Also find information, um, put graphs and reports on, on top of that. We also have something called ION. So if anybody's familiar with what ION is, it's a, it's an intelligent object network. Essentially, what it is is uh, the connection point for all things Infor, um, also for third party, but primarily for Infor products. Um, the reason this is important for what we're going to show today is because we're going to be talking about workflow alerts, tasks, um, some of the notifications that happen with inside mobile. And the setup for those are done through the ION monitors and workflows. So, 
A workflow is a little bit easier than actually um, CSI eventing. So if any of you are used to or have written uh, events inside of uh, the CSI application, workflows are much easier in the ION application. They're a lot more straightforward. Uh, they don't require any coding or writing of .NET or anything of that nature. But I have a few of them in here, um, customer alert, high order, production order stop. Uh, and then you can create as many as, as you want. So that's a workflows and those workflows can be kicked off and triggered by anything inside of CSI. Um, so we're gonna talk about that when we go through the Mingle application. We can also set up uh, alarms and alarms are alerts uh, that actually are built through templates. And the cool part of ION alarms is that a lot of times you write a workflow and you say, I wanna be notified when this condition happens, right? So in, in this example, when a uh, production order is stopped, I wanna be notified about that. Well, that requires that you set up either a lot of those criteria uh, for everyone or, you know, for the group um, that's kind of now hard coded, so to speak, inside of that workflow. Well, what the ION alarms allow you to do is build an alarm template. And what that does for you is allow you to, now when I open the ION alarm app on my, my mobile, it would prompt me for some condition. So let's say, for example, I want to be notified of invoices that are over a and X dollars, and that X could be anything. So a user can that has permissions can open the Ion Alarms app that we'll see and prompt, give feedback, say, well, I want to see all the invoices that are over $10,000, right? Whereas somebody else may say, I only want to see the invoices over $20,000. So it, it really allows users to kind of create their own alarms and alerts based on criteria in the system uh, that doesn't have to be predefined, all right? So that's what the alarms, and you build those through the alarm templates inside of ION. This is the ION desk that kind of tells us everything together. The Mingle application, if you're not familiar with it, this is where you will connect with other people throughout the organization, share information. Um, you can actually link and embed um, hashtags, which are also called social objects in, in uh, Mingle. And what I mean by that is you can put in the job number, let's say, for example. So I have a problem with this uh, job, job number, and then a hashtag for the job. And that is now connected uh, in the activity feed that allows you to click on it and link straight into CSI. Again, assuming that you would have permissions uh, to access that area. Um, chat is uh, an interactive communication tool and we can use it on the mobile app that we'll see and you can also use it built in uh, the Mingo application through CSI. You'll notice I have some, some feeds going on here. I can reply, show details, share these with other people and so forth. So that's the one that we'll probably uh, best start with. So I have a, uh, a viewer up here and hopefully it will be sharing. Can everyone see that hopefully? So you should see my phone here and I have um, all of the info apps under one. And if I go ahead and go into uh, one of the applications, let's say the InformMingle, the same posts that I would see here um, are also with inside my application. So this event allows me to do communications and connections between people right here in the posts. So I can create new posts. I can respond to ones that are already there. Um, you know, if it's eight o'clock at night and all of a sudden I have something on my mind, I can you know, email someone in manufacturing and ask them a question. Uh, so it kind of takes the place of, you know, text and email, except that it's socially around the system and then it allows you to embed information into that um, that has pertinent information with the ERP. 
So if I were to create a new post, and Todd is our IT manager. I'm not sure if he's on, but if he is, he will respond. And I can send that post. And if he happens to be on today, then he'll respond while we're on here, hopefully. Uh, if not, so you can see that it's all kind of encapsulized in one area. So I can have all of my alerts uh, that get created throughout uh, all of the workflows. So alerts that I would be on the distribution list for. Any tasks that show up in my queue. Tasks are also like workflows where you can assign somebody a task. So for example, uh, somebody's changed a credit limit and I'm the accountant and I might get a task show up in my queue that indicates that I need to go ahead and check the credit and either authorize or reject the credit authorization. Right. The tasks um, also are set up as a queue. Um, and that means that for, for that example, let's say I have two accountants in my organization and I send it to the shared accounting distribution list. Well, if Sam picks it up or if Sally picks it up, you know, they could be working on the same thing. One could reject it, one could approve it. So essentially you go in and you can assign that task to yourself. So if we have a queue for, let's say, quality or manufacturing, uh, it can be set up in a queue fashion and you can assign it to yourself. And the cool feature is you can assign it to somebody else. So if you want to delegate that out, you can assign it to somebody else and um, put it on their plate. And then it takes it off everyone else's task list. Um, posts we're seeing here, that's the, uh, the post. And then connections um, connected to Todd in this database. Uh, but of course you would be connected to everyone in your organization. And notifications, same thing. So notifications uh, can be set up. Those are more global alerts, notifications like announcements from the company um, or letting everyone know that uh, team A should come in today to the manufacturing due to the environment or uh, something of that nature. Right? So all that can be set up and run through the application. So similarly, the N4 Go, requiring my password. Now you all know it. Uh, so what this does is uh, give me the ability to see most of the information uh, together in one place. So you think of it like a one-stop shop. Um, so if we're to come back over to the Ingo application, um, home pages again are that uh, idea of putting widgets and um, quick links and such on the dashboards that, that you build for yourself or uh, as a group. And we can also then view those same exact um, ones. So if I go to planning, and actually if I make it more of a, more of a mobile application, right? Should look pretty much the same. Yeah. So I have run planning. I, now the warehouse lookup. This is the this is the part about Go that some some days it works and some days it uh, it, it doesn't. So I'm not gonna make up anything. And some days these uh, these dashboards work really well, and some days they don't. So I know N4 still kind of in, in beta phase, but my links work, but not necessarily all of my my lookups and such. But the idea is that I would be able to see those all in the same view. Okay, so with that, let's go back and uh, my eye alarms are there, but the one that I really want to talk about is uh, import document management. So if anyone's familiar with the document management that comes along with uh, iOS now, that's an in-context um, application. So that means that I can I work with it off of my my viewer. So if I'm in the items, job orders, I can open up my in context and I will have results here where I can create attachments. So let's say I wanted to 
attach something here. I could attach a file, media, anything. And that will log it into the actual vault or the document management. Application. Okay. So if I close that down and I look at my, my actual view of the document management, this would be the scenario where uh, maybe I am um, on the receiving dock and something's come in damaged and I want to take a picture of it and have it automatically attached into my CSI workspace so I don't have to um, take a picture and scan it and do all of that. Uh, that's actually what we would use this for. So if you'll notice it pops up and says, take a picture or video, so forth. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead and take a picture. And I'm gonna take a picture of this certification for some steel. So we get done. And then it, it might ask me a few questions. Uh, what kind of document type is this? Where does it belong? And you can set up your own groups uh, within the application. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it under document. Uh, you can also fill out some, some tags. So if, if anyone's familiar with tagging things, um, you can put in multiple IDs here. Uh, that way it's easy, easier to search for, for information. But nothing's required here. It's just uh, really a policy that you might have in your company. And when it's done. So I can view that document here, or it's uploaded. And now I come over to the document management. I go to put that there. Put under. Uh, So I'm going to download it, view it, uh, if I have a viewer on my desktop, but it's real time. So immediately that picture I took with my wonderful shadow showed up uh, immediately inside in for document management. Um, out of most of these, I would say in the field, we find most of our users, this is, this is a good use case one where uh, this is a pretty popular app for, for our users more so than, than say the home page, it's just because um, uh, not everyone has uh, Mingle deployed and uses it frequently. So let's go back to my So let's talk just real quick, <clears throat> show you the burst application. Um, so I created a dashboard and actually one of the info training courses. And uh, it's very similar to the home pages in Mingle, and you can create different workspaces. And uh, this isn't actually looking at, at real CSI data, it's just looking at a, a database that we made up. But these are things that I built inside the actual Burst BI tool, uh, created the dashboard. And just like I would expect, um, I can view that, I can refresh it view any of that information if I have permissions to do so in inside of uh, CSI. So there's there's really no way with home pages or with burst that uh, you can like get around the permissions uh, that are built in because everything goes through um, mingle authorization, which is also tied to your CSI login. And so if you don't have permissions to see financials, well you can't uh, look at a home page that has financials on. So no one needs to be too concerned about that. There are other ones that we're not going to talk about today, but if any of uh, you all uh, use some of these applications, um, they can be helpful. If you use Infor's expense management, they do have uh, In4XM. Um, if you're using the full uh, service management, they also have a full service management package there. 
in four concierge, uh, basically what that is, is you're in four extreme. So there's a mobile app actually for in four extreme. So when you're frustrated because you can't get something to work, you could pull it up on your mobile, use the same credentials that you would use uh, for the extreme portal. Okay. So now we'll go in and look at chat. And I think a lot of times, like when we look at Go, I think that's going to be um, an overlap to some of these other products. So we have Mingle and we have Alarms and then we have chat. But I think the whole idea of Go is trying to put all of those in one place. So I don't need three applications. I can just have the one um, because some of them are a little bit uh, of an overlap. Uh, the difference in chat, uh, it also allows me to work with Coleman. So if any of you are familiar with Coleman, that's the digital assistant. Uh, they call it right, AI, but it's a digital assistant with inside of uh, with inside of iOS. And you can create skills in, in Coleman, uh, similar to if you have an Alexa or um, some of the other ones that are out there on the market. Uh, and you create or add skills to it, and then you can uh, interact with Coleman. You could uh, set up a skill to report back sales numbers for today, uh, anything that's you know related to CSI content. Again, if you don't have permissions, um, when you go to do it, right, it would ask for a digital signature, some kind of an authorization. So I couldn't look up sales numbers uh, if I'm if I don't have authorization to to do that. We can also use this very similar to IDM. We can also view attachments that uh, that anyone's attached with inside of, of Mingle as well. So I can start a conversation. Uh, I can either start a conversation with Coleman or with someone else. And Here. I think I typed it on. Another cool feature of this is being able to take uh, text, right? So, or um, talk to text. So, a lot of times um, we want hands free. You don't want to actually type it. Uh, I can do that. It's recording audio. I can just start speaking into it. It's going to fill it out, text. Um, and it uses the Coleman engine, so it starts to recognize your voice kind of like Alexa would in terms of how you speak. So if you speak like a Kentuckian, like some of us, then you have that problem. But it starts to learn your vocabulary over time. Some of you uh, may have um, in for service management or advanced plant maintenance. Um, and this is the one that I think gets uh, um, really kudos this year for in for being able to um, create an app that uh, it really is, is done extremely well. It, it, it walks through all of the pieces um, that you would expect to see in your Service mobile. And bring that up today if I can. Been having some issues with it. Let's get connected, but it's good because we can do that when we talk about how we connect all these all try to reconnect it. So inside of uh, Mingle, go over here to my little icon. There's an apps and authorizations. And you notice that uh, all of a sudden we get all of the apps that you kind of just looked at. Um, the exception of one view because I don't have an Android. Uh, but the question often comes up, do we have Android apps? Yes, uh, both Android. 
uh, and Apple Store. You can download all these for free, and then all you have to do is let's see, we'll do iOS chat, and you get a QR code. So I would bring this up on my application, hit uh, the scan, right? Take a picture of that, and that's it. That's all you really need to do to get connected to these. And again, as long as you have the credentials uh, built inside of Mingle, then you can get to these. All right. So typically, I think else at this point, if there's questions, um, that's kind of the quick overview of what the applications are. Again, there's a lot of power if uh, you know, take the time to set up alarms, alerts, notifications in the system and connect the iOS. Now, some of you may not be running the iOS, so uh, we do want to make sure you understand that that's it. That's the requirement to uh, work with mobile, um, with the exception of uh, service. You can run the service mobile app as long as you just have in for service management. You don't need to have a or well, sightlines version or CSI's version. You don't need iOS for that. Okay. We had a question come through that kind of dovetails nicely to that. If we're not using mobile apps now, what is the best way to get started? Um, yeah, so if you have your in for extreme um, documentation, right? So if you go into Extreme uh, and you go in and do a search uh, in the knowledge base, there is a user guide for every one of these uh, inside of the documentation. So that would be um, free to download that information. And um, each one of them just walks you through the setup and then how you go about using each of them. Uh, it's, they're fairly straightforward. Uh, usually, like most applications, you don't really have to have a lot of, a lot of training. Now, I'll add to that and say the back end is where the getting started needs to happen, right? So, uh, not as much once I get all of the alerts and the uh, workflows and things set up. So that's really where the work is, which would be more. Um, sorry, I got to go to, which would be more maybe an IT function, power user function. Um, but the big thing is setting up the workflows and policies, alarms. Uh, same thing, you can download um, an ION user guide and an ION administration guide, and it will help you build the workflows. And there's some templates, there's some examples in there. Uh, they're really not difficult to do. Uh, they're, they're pretty straightforward if you just kind of understand a workflow process. And um, and then they just need to be activated and turned on. So uh, I find it one of the easier things that just kind of works out of the box. Um, for those of you who use CSI and have eventing, you know, that can be a little bit of a, of a struggle at times. Um, I will throw this out too. It's not really connected to mobile, but uh, we have a, an application that was written by um, so, someone at Infor. Um, and we can send the link out. But basically what it is, is it allows you to create your workflows in ION and then have them moved over and create the event for you in CSI. Um, I think that's going to be released uh, here by the end of the year as part of the package, but um, but there was a, a guy in, uh, in Hokanoop who actually wrote it and uh, he gave, he's, he's giving it out and it works tremendously. So for those of you who do have iOS and uh, really don't like to build events, uh, you uh, can let us know and we can get you the link to that. You can install it and uh, it makes it really easy to create your, your events from that. So. Uh, okay. Another question that came through. In your experience with the mobile apps for customers who may not be using them now, what's the biggest advantage of taking the time to build out the workflows, get them up and running? 
Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, are there, are there good use cases? Um, I think it's the same, it's the same as how your company might want to roll out events, right? So we say, when we go through implementations, uh, as, as most of you did, hey, you know, that's going to be great. We're going to be able to get all these events in our emails, but we get too many emails anyway. Um, so one of the nice parts about this is, uh, yeah, spend the time because I guarantee that in, in your organization, there are real-time alerts that, that people uh, want to, want to either have and be alerted on or collaborate. So how nice would it be to get a ping that a PO is late and you're the project manager and you can pull Mingle up, right? And I can see that alert on my Mingle page and I can immediately ping, uh, oops, got disconnected. And I can immediately ping Todd or anyone in my connected platform and just say hey what's going on with this PO could you call the could you call the supplier uh, I will say that you can add users as well inside of your connections that are not um, that do not have to be CSI users when you're talking about Pingle so you can actually set up a supplier's email to work through uh, the app so you could connect with them that way uh, send them either social content, text messages, emails uh, on their side, even though they don't have uh, Mingle on, on their side. So it's really the collaboration of just quick response, being able to collaborate, um, find out things. I know we all like to think that we're done at five o'clock or whatever, but how many times do things come up and pressing or that you want to be noted about on, on second shift or to prepare for tomorrow? So really becomes, I think, a new world, right? Uh, more flow of inform information. And what you'll find with Mingle uh, and all these alert systems is uh, really what our customers try to do is we try to help them turn the system into an active system rather than a passive system. So instead of going out there and searching data, how many times do we dump data down spend an hour in Excel looking through it, figuring out what we're trying to get to. Uh, with alarms and the workflows and the templates, we can set up where the system should already have that information and be able to tell us um, better what to do and be more proactive rather than reactive. Great. Well, I'm not seeing any other questions come through so with that i think we can wrap it up and give you all some of the rest of your day back pat thank you for presenting thank you everyone for joining we will send out the recording either later today or tomorrow if you have any questions please don't hesitate to reach out to myself or pat ormer thank you so much great thank you thanks absolutely